Everybody good? If you could find in your packet, please, it's page 20, conveniently located between pages 19 and 21. Whoa. Very, very convenient. Sure. Okay, so over the course of the last five days, we've been on this evolutionary journey with integration. And I told you five days ago when we started that integration is like the skill for the whole rest of the semester. And it makes my heart feel really good, let's assume I have a heart, when I look over there at the sticker chart and I see all those stickers, because it tells me that you all are moving in a really good direction with integration. You cannot stick your head in the sand in this and be like, oh, I just don't get this. I'll let the next, I'll pick it up on the next thing. No, no, this is the next thing. This is the only thing. We're going to be doing integration from now until 98, 98 days from now when you take the AP exam. We've got to get good at this. Mm -hmm. I also need to update that number because it says 99. I know, Destiny. Thank you. So where we're going now is application problems involving the definite integral. And we can thank Jeanette for that because the other week she was like, aren't there real world applications of this? Yes, indeed. Of course, this was in the plan before Jeanette said what she said. But this is where we are now. What we're going to do for the next 22 minutes, I'm going to set my timer at 9.20. We're going to stop. And I need somebody strong who's going to give you the look. Uh, I want Are you okay? I, I saw you <laughs> doing that. I, I was worried. Somebody strong. Garrison, you look like you're strong. I just said he looks strong. Okay? At 9.20. <laughs> Yeah, somebody might want to check. At 9.20, so you are going to shut me down. Okay. At least you're going to try. Okay, 9.20. Goal is over the course of the next 22 minutes, we're going to work as many of these application questions as we can. They're all on page 20. You're going to notice that not one single one of them uses the integral sign. At no point do you actually say that. At no point do I say, hey, Diego, go find the definite integral. Nope, not even once. You need to know, because these are application problems, what your approach is going to be. So let's look at this first one. Problem number one, water is added to the tank at a rate of R of t equals 2 plus 5 square root of t liters per hour, where t is the number of hours since 7 a.m. If the tank originally contained 1,000 liters of water, how much water is in the tank at 4 p.m.? I just want you to have a quick conversation with the folks around you. What's your plan here? What are you going to do here? Hopefully you're having flashbacks to the last unit. Okay, we're going double. You can make it. Homework over here. Okay. Homework over here. Everyone's going to do double. Okay. Homework over here. Everyone's going double. Okay. Homework over here. Everyone's going double. All right. Water is added to the tank at a rate of R of t equals 2 plus 5 squared t liters per hour. T is the number of hours since 7 a.m. Tank originally contained 1,000 liters. How much water is in the tank at 4 p.m.? What thoughts are out there? I want to get some hands on this. What are you going to do? One person, two people, maybe three, maybe four. Diego, what are your thoughts here? Make an integral. I mean, you know, yeah, make an integral from uh, zero to nine. Okay, from zero to nine, keep going. Oh, so RT with respect to the X plus. RT with respect to what? To it T sounded like X, T but respect to T. Plus uh, a thousand views. Plus a thousand, which I'm going to write in the front. How many all agree with him on this? Like, that's your plan. Michelle, why is that your plan? Um, because it's asking, like, how much water is at, like, a certain time. So, how much water? at this particular time, but why an integral? The question is how much? Why an integral here? Henry, why are we going to do an integral? Because R of t is a rate. R of t is a rate. R of t is telling you, right, it's, it's answering the question how fast? How fast is water going in? The question is how much water is there? That's what an integral does. 
R of t, how fast it goes in. The integral is how much goes in. So Daisy, why are we adding the thousand? Because it's asking how much is the f for p.m. So that's like how much is in there at 4 p.m.? I've got to consider the initial plus this guy over here. Now, this setup right here, you guys should recognize it has a name. There's like this really like important, almost like a fundamental theorem. That oh, it's the fundamental theorem of calculus. Yes. Indeed. If I'm scoring this for free response, probably one point earned here and one point for having the definite integral. Good. So now all you got to do finish it off. 1,000 plus the integral from 0 to 9, 2 plus 5 square roots of t dt. I would hope that for most of you, you're good here. You know what to do here. So take a minute, show me what you can do. I care greatly about that setup because you're showing me you understand the application. By hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you yeah, it's by hand. Mm -hmm. oh. Karina was like, what? It can't be by hand. Oh. Of course it is. We have skills now. We do. The square root of t might be confusing you a little bit. Well, how about making it t to the one half power? When I try to integrate 2 plus 5t to the half, my question here is, what do I take the derivative of to get 2? Everybody knows that. 2t plus 5 times t to the half. This is power rule. Power rule says, take that exponent, add 1, 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves, and then divide by 3 halves. To divide by 3 halves, the same as times 2 thirds. 5 times 2 thirds going to be 10 thirds. You evaluate from 0 to 9, and don't forget about that 1,000 at the beginning. How many guys were able to successfully integrate that? We've got Kevin, we've got Garrison, we've got a couple other folks. Your next move, you're going to plug in. So 1,000 plus big parentheses, 2 times 9, 10 thirds. 9 to the 3 halves minus 2 times 0, 10 thirds, 0 to the 3 halves. Yeah. Or why does it do the t? Why what? The second one. Here? It's not 2 to the t, it's 2 times t. Because this is what you would take the derivative of Andy to get to. Okay? Now, free response part of the test? We're done. We're done. The only question on the free response part of the test is, what are the units? I love it. If I wait long enough, I hear all the possible things. Liters, liters per hour. Somebody said liters per hour per hour. Somebody stuttered. Liters per hour per hour per hour per hour. Which one is it? Go back to the question. How much is in there? Liters. It has to be liters. Okay, now I am also interested. Can you simplify? I do want you to simplify, so let's finish this off. 1,000 plus 2 times 9, well, that's 18. 9 to the 3 halves power, that means take the square root of 9. 3, 3 cubed. Is that 27? 10 thirds times 27. Maybe I've got to come back to that. Minus 2 times 0. 0. 10 thirds times 0 to the 3 halves. 0. Love it. Let's keep going though, because this could be multiple choice. 18 plus 10 thirds of 27. Right. 1 third of 27 is 9. 10 thirds has to be 90. Add that together. 1,108 liters. If I'm scoring this, like I said, one point for fundamental theorem initial condition, one point for your integral, one point because you were able to successfully integrate, one point for reaching here, probably one point for the leaders. This could be five points. And this would be the kind of thing I'd hope is really high scoring for most of the friends in the room. Henry and Karina. But at 2 plus 5 root. 
root t so need to do um five five root of one half t to the to the t, oh wait five root one half t squared okay, we started off here yeah and you're saying that that's the same thing as five root one half t squared five root one half t squared i don't I don't if know you got down to two, and then... No, you're thinking about taking a derivative. We're integrating. We're going in the other direction. All right, Henry, I'll loop back around to you in a little bit. Is everybody mostly okay with this one? Yeah. Uh, what if, you know how the integral is from 9 to 0? What if it was like 0 to 9? Wait, it is from 0 to 9. I mean, for 9 to 0. Oh, what if it was from 9 to 0? Yeah. And so like you wouldn't like it in that order? You could flip the order? but then you have to introduce a negative sign into the problem. I want to stop with this one. I just want to keep pushing. All right, so let's take another minute. Problem number two. See what you can do. I have faith. Oh, I have so much faith in the DeRosier family. The biological, the legal, the wannabes. I have faith in you all. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> A car travels with the velocity given by V of T equals T plus 1 over T plus 1 kilometers per minute. <laughs> At time t equals one minute, the car's position is x of one equals three. Determine the displacement of the car from t equals one to t equals e. Displacement. That, 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 that seems like a word I'm supposed to know. Okay, walk around, seeing who's got a good start on this. Okay, Axel's got a good start on this. If you want to find displacement, you can. All right, friends. Most folks seem to have a good setup here. T plus one over T plus one DT from one to E. Honestly, how many guys have this as your setup? Okay, now some people have 3 plus. Where are the folks that have 3 plus? Paul's got it, Henry's oh. got it, Destiny's got it, Jose's got it. Why is it wrong? Sorry, y'all. You're like, oh! Why is it wrong? Because this is the. Well, I thought about it as velocity plus 3, they don't go together. The velocity plus 3, they don't go together. Okay. The way that you find displacement, it's just a change in position. You're saying, how much does your position change? You don't actually need to know where you start. You just need to say, oh, I walked five meters, whatever it was. You're not interested in your starting point with displacement. So don't include the three plus. If you've got this, one full point. From here, we've got to integrate. Hopefully, the integration is pretty quick. The integral of t is a half t squared. That's one I'd hope everybody gets right away. 1 over t plus 1. This is the natural log of the absolute value of t plus 1 from 1 to e. That definitely gets you a point. Finish it off. Yeah. Okay. Did my answer your last question? Oh, yeah, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir? So it's not that you need to solve it. I think your work you're asking is like how do you simplify it? And it's possible that you don't simplify anything at all? Possible. Possible. All right. One half e squared plus natural log absolute value of e plus one minus one half 
1 squared plus the natural log of 1 plus 1. That's the like right expression if you plug all the things in. Okay, things I could do to simplify, we've got a half of e squared, natural log, absolute value of e plus 1. Uh, what do we got over here? 1 half of 1 squared, that's just a half. Natural log of 1 plus 1, that's natural log of 2. That's good. That is a great answer. And then I hide it from you. Because I always do. What could I do? You're frozen for a little bit. Garrison's stretching the muscles. He's getting ready to try to shut me down at 920. It's going to take more than that, son. What could we do to simplify this? It has to do with the LN. And we just talked about this yesterday, so I was hoping more friends go back in your notes. What can we do to simplify this? Gonzalo, go back in your notes. What can you do to legally simplify this? Jackie, coming your way. Natural log of e plus 1 over 2. Because you have a natural log minus a natural log. This is one of those algebra 2 properties that we haven't seen in a while. Now everything else, I'm just going to leave it 1 half e squared minus 1 half plus that. Now I would not bother simplifying anymore. Okay? Maybe I could. Maybe I put it over one denominator. Nah, no, it doesn't matter. It's the ln piece I want to make sure that we're okay with. And I need the units. Kilometer? No. Kilometers. Kilometers. This is going to be kilometers. So one point for the initial setup, one point for the antiderivative, one point for the plug-in, one point for the units, four points. Henry. Where does that, that over 2 come from, or e plus 1 over 2? Where does the e plus 1 over 2 come from? It comes by combining the natural log here with the natural log over here. A natural log minus a natural log is the same thing as the natural log of the quotient. Oh. Okay? All righty. You go on to number three, see what you can do. Okay, so this natural log minus a natural log becomes natural log of a quotient or division. So what do you think? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that would be a lot better. Because two is already a positive number, so you don't have the absolute value. But if it was negative, then? Because you're dividing. You went from natural log minus to natural log. The property is natural log minus a natural log. It's the natural log of the fraction. But if it was natural log plus natural log, then it would be a positive number. Wait, is it going to be positive or negative? by this one at all. Yay us! On just about every paper, I saw that as the setup. Because we know definite integral means area. Congratulations, first point. Now here's where things start to seem to fall apart. What is the integral? Well, I did not see the right interval on anybody's paper. Nope, not even on one. Okay. So you might want to take out your foldable if you have it. What's the integral of sine kx? What's the integral of Negative 1 over k 
cosine of kx plus Charlie. So my question to you all is, what's k? It's not 4. Pi over 4. If you're not sure, if you're like, but wait, this is pi x over 4, but isn't that the same as pi over 4 times x? So this is just saying that k is pi over 4. So your integral is going to be the negative 1 divided by pi over 4, which is 4 over pi cosine of pi x over 4 from negative 2 to 2. I'm not going to worry about plus Charlie. I'm not going to worry about plus Charlie because it's a definite integral. Yes, it's going to be negative. And now we plug in big parentheses minus big parentheses. Negative 4 over pi cosine pi times 2 over 4 minus negative 4 over pi cosine pi times negative 2 over 4. And for the sake of time, we're going we're gonna to stop there. There is some simplification that you could do. If you do it correctly, you're going to get 0. And I, I want to make sure, because Garrison is going to try his darndest to shut me down in just a minute. I want you guys to take a look at number 4. For the function f of x equals secant of x times tangent of x, find the average value on the interval 0 to pi over 4. I want to see your setup first. Always show me the setup. Average value. How do we find average value? There's something really specific I need to see here. One divided by b minus a, the integral from a to b, f of x dx. That is fair game at this point. So your setup average value for this function is going to be the integral of secant of x tan x from 0 to pi over 4. Seeing that on a whole lot of papers, feeling really good about that. But then you've got to have the times 1 over pi over 4 minus 0. That absolutely gets you the first point. Hey, teacher, man, it's time to stop. Hey, give me a minute, bud. All right. Okay, see, I knew it was going to go down that way. All right. But we got, we got to pick up the pace here. All right, integral of secant of x times tan x. How many of you all know what that is? You just know it on site. I see one, I see two, I see three. I was hoping for this number to be like in the 20s. Jeanette, what's the integral of secant of x times tan x? It's just secant of x. And you're going to evaluate from 0 to pi over 4. 1 divided by pi over 4 minus 0. We have a better way to write that. Pi over 4 minus 0 is pi over 4. 1 divided by pi over 4. This is where we're going to keep it, change it, flip it. So it's going to be 4 over pi times that from here. Big parentheses minus big parentheses. 4 over pi times secant <laughs> pi over 4. Minus 4 over pi, secant is 0, done and done. All the friends are good? Okay, cool. And could you simplify it? Yes, I'm going to assume that this is free response right now for the sake of time. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Did anybody earn both stickers yesterday? Garrison earned both stickers yesterday. You get to start on the homework right now. Everybody else who didn't earn both stickers, we're going to do the sticker challenge again right now. If you want to take a minute to look over your integration formulas while I pass out the quiz, feel free. We're going to do stick, sticker number one first. So if you don't need that sticker, you can also work on the homework. Is that it? 
This is okay, where are the folks testing on the first sticker? And yeah, we can shut off at this point. Testing on the first sticker. Closing on. Okay, 